Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the What Did He Say podcast. It's your boy Chingo Blingo with the big tamarindo and the big homie. Hey everybody, Rob GTV here in the house again. It's good to be back, man. That wasn't a very hip hop intro, Rob. Yeah. I know every time we do this. Because, you know, it was like, you know, I my know, boy, know. R-O-B to the G in the place to be. And I'm talking about what to do, baby boy. I, the I big could, homie. I could spice it up. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it just would seem too inauthentic. Yeah, yeah no, nah, man, do you. Uh, I'm cracking a beer open today. And it's the afternoon, dog. Here, here, here. Don't, don't yeah, spill right. it on the equipment. Cheers. Good shit. Because that's Rob's equipment. It's, I'm going to have to end up fucking reimbursing <laughs> if I spill some shit. El Chingon in my hands over here. So shout out to Back Pew Brewing. We were actually in some like talks, negotiation type shit. Yeah. And I got so sidetracked. With all this, you know, social media BS. Yeah. Uh, motherfuckers with the, uh, what is it? The witch hunt. Yeah. The witch hunt. Chingle Bling's a Nazi. And uh, I just want to apologize to them, but we're, we've been busy. So I'm going to have to hit them up and be like, hey, dude, not trying to be rude. Because they're super nice people. Yeah. They they brought us barbecue during the, the meeting. And, you know, I met the family and they showed us around. Very cool. Uh, uh, the dude that actually does all the brewing. He nerds out about it. Yeah. And I don't know if, if you're like this, but when people nerd out about some shit, like I just met a dude that makes knives, slangs them hoes for, for a rack. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. A stack. Yeah. You know, a motherfucking, a grand. Damn. As, as they would say. A thousand dollar knife. Um, he's also partners in this turtle box speaker company. You heard of that? Turtle box. You no. heard of that? No, uh It's kind of new, but he, he pitches it as like the Yeti cooler of speakers. So they're hella durable. And it's for, you know, alpha males like you and me, dog. We out there hunting and shit. Ka-ka, pa-pa, pa-pa, <laughs> bra, pa-pa, pa-pa. And you want to have it hanging yeah. on your on your stuff, on you know, while you're driving around. Hell yeah. Mud. So, yeah, kicked it with some cool people, man. Uh, shout out to Michael Berry. He, uh, he had some folks over. They're like, hey, Jingle, we're going to make ranch waters. I'm Did think- you know what that was? No. <laughs> Did you know? Yeah, dude. I wanted to see when I saw that video. I, I read the caption. I was like, I wonder if Jingle knows what ranch water is because you can buy it in a can, but a lot of people just like making it fresh. Dude, I enjoyed it so much. Oh, okay. That in my head, I was already thinking, yo, I know Eighth Wonder do- does canning. I know Back Pew has their own canning machine. Yeah. I know it includes tequila. Yep. I got the plug on that. That's right. I started whipping up a play. I said, maybe I won't put my name on it. Maybe I won't put my face on it. Because right yeah. now, people think I'm I'm a Nazi. Right. Self-hater, uh, Malinche, right. Theo Tom, Coconut, uh, Vendido. But the main one is Sellout. That's the main one. Yeah. But anyway, uh, you know, my brain started going. So, yeah, I like folks that nerd out about stuff. And um, I think it's super cool, man. Like, that was actually my original reason for per podcasting, really, was just to hear people nerd out about the shit they love. And hearing their insight and the way that they pursue whatever, kind of like you, exactly. When we, I mean, the way you look at business, music, mm-hmm. even family, just everything in general. Like, you nerd out about the fundamentals of everything you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mostly. If you're into it, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, before I forget, Versace Mariachi drops in like three days. This album goes hard. This might be my retirement album because, you know, some people don't know no talent. But uh, I'm the bad guy right now. I get it. Versace Mariachi drops Friday. And that's why I wore this sweater. You know what I'm talking about? Shout out to my homie, David Melgar. He was the lead designer for Joy Rich. This really? is a clothing brand that like Lil Wayne, Rihanna, all kind of people were rocking when David was at the helm. And uh, this is some shit he designed. He make a whole bunch of fly shit. And he designed my merch line. So it's 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 uh creatively designed and directed by david melgar he did the artwork too you know sh- also shout out to uh frank from art manifested he did a lot of the illustrations but uh the creative direction was the homie dude i love it dude i feel like while you're talking about this because you need to talk about who's on there again we yeah we got it. pitbull fifth or weeby paul wall fat pat whole bunch of people and i'll tell you more about it but go on, man. I, I'm, I'm cutting you off. No, no, no. I wanted to uh, maybe play the music here if I can get it going while you're talking about that. Oh, shit. Yeah, so my, my homeboy, Midnight. Yeah. Y'all know Comedian Midnight represent that Oak Cliff. That's right. He actually did the intro. Because uh, a lot of times he's the one that brings me up on stage. Yeah. And he does a great job. Um, we got producers on there. My homie Zeus from Fort Wayne. Hold on. Oh, move your car. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm. A, I'm gonna talk about the album while Rob moves his car. Okay. Uh, the song you're listening to right now, 
is Cubo. ¿Quién anda ahí? Hey, which is the one with the music so I can lower it just in case? That one? Yeah. Right, bet. But how y'all doing today, ladies and gentlemen? Um, yeah, you're listening to Cubo in the background. Produced by my homie Eric Jaimez. He did Budo Body. Budo Body. He's done a whole bunch of tracks. A whole bunch of tracks for me. He's on that like Cumbia with the 808s and he'll fuck around, flip some bachata and put some trap up under it. Um, but shout out to all the producers, man. Like I said, Zeus representing Dos Delincuentes. He's out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, we have um, All Day Ray. All Day Ray was like the A&R and the project manager, man. He was on my ass like, Chingo, get in the studio, man. We got to fix this. We got to fix that. All Day Ray produced Do It Again featuring Beat King. A.K.A. Club Godzilla. Um, he also produced Fifth Wheel on the Back, the 2020 remix. Uh, he produced that. Man, he did Screwed Up featuring Paul Wall and Fat Pat. I want to shoot a music video to that to put it in the haters' faces. But if I were to believe it. Uh, but it's jamming, man. We have a, a song on there called Texas. It features an up-and-coming female rapper. Her name is Chris Dow Poppin. She's out of El Paso, Texas. I met her years ago. Uh, with, with the homies out there, man. Uh, my homeboy Tobias out there in El Paso. That song also features GT Garza, one of the uh, lyrical, you know, one of the one of the hardest cats out of H Town. Uh, also, the homie Sin Ryu, he's on the hook. I had never worked with him before, but he killed the hook. Super creative kid out of Austin, Texas. Uh, that boy T, he's also on that song. It's damn near like a crew song. Like for example, um, like Money Power Respect. With mm -hmm. Lil' Kim and uh, The Locks. Uh, that's like a crew song. But uh, while I'm on the subject of that, I want to sit down either like with yourself or Joseph and do a video where I'm breaking down like my top five rappers, maybe top five influence, or like top five lyricists. Because there's so many different categories, yeah. right? You got styles, you have substance, there's different styles and, and all that. But uh, I think that'll be a dope. A, a dope little video or something because I want to talk about like like fabulous like fabulous might not be on my top five of all time but on my top five lyricists that I like you got like Big L rest in peace um he's just super lyrical I don't I don't jam him every day or e even every month uh but ly lyrics wise I love Jadakiss a lot of these New York cats uh Bum B he, you know he's from Texas of course but um uh, I mean, obviously Eminem. He's just so good that people... Um, it's like he's the outlier. Yeah. People are like, man, you can't even... Come on, man. It's like let, he's in his own fucking... Yeah, you gotta let him be. Yeah. So... Uh, Fabulous, though. I hadn't heard his name in oh, so long. Man. So good. He's really good. Uh, there's probably... Just, I mean, you just have to listen to the deep cuts. Like, just pull up. And he's so consistent that you could pretty much pull up either like a Fabulous Essentials or even one of his fucking mixtapes, like a recent mixtape. Yeah. Or even a recent project with Jadakiss. Jadakiss is hard. He never really had no weak verse. Um, like the the raspy voice and, and the delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, shit like that. And then you got... Then you have people like DMX. That the lyrics aren't going to be super deep. But like, god damn. It's just, you know... He's introspective. And, and at the same time, he has bars. and then But he also makes hits, too. You ever heard his uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? <laughs> I, I think I heard it like one time. Dude, I fucking love that video. I'm good on that. I, I, <laughs> who who put that together? I don't know. He was just, I don't know where he was, but there's like a desk and he just starts going on it. You know what this, uh, fuck it, pull it up. Okay, go ahead. It, it's go ahead. Christmas. We we having a beer and shit. Um, we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. And, and I know we got some complaints that we don't stay on subject, but I'm burnt out on politics. <laughs> I'm burnt out on a lot of shit. So, hey, forgive me if I fucking ramble. Sorry. Um, Mighty Soul was trying to give me some feedback. Hey, uh, I got some comments in my DM. And this is what I mean by being burnt out or getting stressed over shit. Mm -hmm. uh, when like people you know leaving comments and shit. And it's like, motherfucker, you got my number. Yeah. Or like, oh, this person, you might be mad about that I ain't did a show. You a promoter and I ain't just did a show with you. I go in your region. Right. And maybe you're upset. I don't know. I haven't thought about you, but maybe you're upset. And that's why you you hit me with the hashtag, fuck Trump, fuck you too. Like, damn. Jesus. Yes. It's real aggressive. It's like, 
whoa, okay, we're no longer professional. Mm. You know, or people I'm supposed to be in a DJ crew with out of Austin. Mm-hmm. And it's like, damn, this, what, okay, oh, you trying to be funny? Okay, what is it? Oh, okay, we just going to try to gang up <laughs> on Chingo today. <laughs> but uh, I thank God that that um, I'm wise enough. I've gone through, I've gone through a lot of shit. You know, people don't, you know, so this ain't even really like a real storm. Like, oh, people even calling you a sellout on the internet. Okay, cool. But that's fine. I'm not going to read into it. Obviously, if it's people you know, um, shit. Like, I mean, I don't know this cat that well, uh, Daniel Suarez. Yeah. But ese güey me dejó comentario. Oh, shit. You know, me dejó comentario, pero ¿sabes qué, güey? No hay pedo. Because I don't know him like that anyway. It's not like I could just text him, hey, me rasta la madre, güey, en pinche internet. Um, He asked for his helmet back on the comments. Some did he ask for? Oh, it? I don't know. Did, I'm just saying. No, I think somebody told him <laughs> get your helmet back, bro, or some shit. And I'm like, ah, all right, everybody, I get it. It's 2020, and we're all fucking the social dilemma. The algorithm got everybody fucked up. Right. All of a sudden, my grills verse wasn't jamming. Right. <laughs> and you were bumping it last week. <laughs> all of a sudden, my Dragon Ball Z shit went internet gold. When you're asking for more of it, went viral before viral was a word. That's you know right. what I mean? Being Paisa, way before Paisa was popping. But uh, but anyway, I just thank God that I have systems in place. Yeah. You know, our faith, uh, you know, we pray, you know, we read the Bible. We know, we're wise enough to know you got to have systems. You know, we work out. We ain't missed a day. I mean, yeah, we take we have rest days and shit like that. But we didn't fall off just because you got the mob with the fucking pitchforks. We, we never fell off, yeah. you know, because I'm wise enough to know you got to have your systems in place. You don't want to let someone alter your self-image and let your serotonin serotonin levels get low and you start doubting yourself and then you let you let that spirit in your house through the computer you know what i'm saying yeah. and then which brings me back to mighty soul got some comments oh they said that um that uh, i was real good on the podcast and that i helped you know keep it on subject because i guess apparently y'all maybe just don't really talk about the issues that like you don't really let rob get to the points y'all were supposed to because you and i'm like oh okay well look send rob the producer (laughs) that feedback (laughs) you know what i'm saying but i'm not gonna you know be in be upset with my wife and me start you know you can't let not at all and that's why like i don't have to like if y'all really mad at chingo bling i know it's just a minority people of course because i really didn't lose people like man ha 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 bitch they take screenshots look at how many followers left you ha 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 and it's like, okay, I still got one over 1.2 million yeah. on Facebook. Real fans. So either y'all haven't gone on there to say, hey, you haven't heard? Like a chismosa. Right. You know what I'm saying? Teachers pet taking names, making lists and shit. Uh, hall monitor energy. But uh, like I said, bro, I'm just blessed and grateful that... Don't get me wrong. Sometimes I'll be, you know what I'm saying? I'll be wanting to be like, man, motherfucker, call me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my soldier Junior. Yeah. No, like, no, not like people I know. Of course. People I know. It's like, come on, bro. Yeah. You know, I, I get it. It's 2020 and the algorithm got people all fucked up. But yeah. you really think I'm pro kids in cages? Because you put, you're putting it out there. You starting a thread. Now other people are chiming in. Now you've assigned your opinion to them. They're now going based off your misinterpretation i never said i was for kids in cages yeah and you supposed to be the leader of the fucking crew you know what i'm saying so uh you know like i said man one common theme in 2020 is that sometimes you know we evolve i'm on chingo 3.0 we've already talked about um and I know I'm rambling, y'all. That's part of the podcast, that, though. That person's going to leave a comment. Yeah, if you're brand new to podcasts in general, this is exactly why you sign up for long-form media like this because there is no necessary... There's not a producer, I mean, aside from me, in Shingo's ear saying, hey, touch this, say that, 15 uh-huh. seconds only, then 60 on the next, and then we got to transition to the next thing. That's not the way it works. This is yeah. open-form media. Yeah, and again, I apologize if y'all want fucking politics out the gate. I mean, this shit is interesting to me. I get into it. But at the same time, I see how people misinterpret things. Yeah. They want to fucking leave you little comments and stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah. Fuck, focus on me for it. I think of Sebastian Manscalco. And he's like, 
wait, what? What are you doing? You it's know, I think of Sa- Sebastian's like the way he is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, what? Like, what are you talking uh, you, about? You might, what the, can we move on here what are we doing you know focus on what you're supposed to be yeah do your job properly and i meant to ask you that honestly uh not to harp on it too much is how much of the people within the actual circle decided to all of a sudden say something shitty or stupid just for the haha or just so they feel included or whatever how many people that i know yeah like close like you know oh dude it's it's unfortunate no not a lot i mean most people they know me yeah if you know me, you, you know, know me. you know I'm not a fucking Nazi. Yeah. You know, there you're you're gonna give me the benefit of the doubt and be like, okay, there's more to this. Of course. I'm really upset with him. I'm gonna text him or call him. I'm gonna tell Chingo, I think you're a fucking idiot. Um, I think you're Q Anon, whatever the fuck that is. I really don't know what the fuck that is. Yeah. But these motherfuckers swear like <laughs> you're getting all your facts from the internet, you know, and not news. Mm. It's like first of all, the mainstream news has legitimately lost credi- credibility mm-hmm. in my eyes. We don't have enough time in the day for me to give you all the examples, but it, you know what I'm saying? That's the first step in the red pill. Yeah. You have to at least understand that a lot of times there might be an agenda, there might be a bias, there might be some stuff that they decided not to include, and they're going to rank stories in the regard that they feel they want you to prioritize about because the way our brains work is the shit you focus on the most ends up being kind of front of mind for the most part. And they're kind of manipulating. um, It's like social engineering. They have a lot of power. They're able to make stuff trend. They're able to frame things different. Even with the questions they ask, they're very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like impactful. Like for example, Ask Trump if he's going to concede. Ask him if he's going to concede. And it's like, now you're trying to make it a thing like, well, what happens, Rob, uh, if he doesn't concede? And it's like, didn't nobody say, will he, will he not? Like, yeah. well, Rob, uh, we have a, an ex-Navy uh, SEAL here. Uh, what would happen in the case that Trump don't want to leave and we need to get him up out of there? You know what I'm yeah, saying? It's and it's like... Political uh, talk. Uh, you know, my point is, the mainstream media... Uh, I'd love to explain more to you, but I don't want you to think I'm rambling um, as to they really don't have a shit ton of credibility in my eyes. And like the way you said, the first step is going out there and trying to find the alternative media, call it independent media, call it whatever. Honestly, I think a lot of the stuff you see online is the media. You know, they call it alternative media, but really a lot of the stuff they talk about has all of the stuff, all of the sound bites you would hear on TV and then the 30 seconds of context either way, forward or backwards, that they leave out on TV, and then some. Some of them have more resources than people that, you know, your Anderson Coopers or whatever the fucks, you know, are going to show on CNN. Yeah, but are the Anderson Coopers doing their job? You know what I'm exactly, saying? Exactly, yeah. And what I... Technically, they are, because technically their job is to be someone who performs lines yeah. and almost like an actor. Right. Uh, they have to carry the show. They have to kind of know my delivery. Yeah. They're performers. Like, like even Tucker Carlson, you know, he's going to know how to make this face as he's saying, really Senator Harris, you know, because it goes both ways. Yeah. It goes both. hundred percent. It goes both fucking ways. Oh man. Tucker Carlson. Um, like I think I heard that the whole thing about a uh, dominion voting systems and, uh, there's a Venezuelan whistleblower. Supposedly, there may or may not. Supposedly, it might have been misinformation, mm-hmm. something that the right puts out there. Right. You know, because it's election year, and they're, you know, we're... It, it, basically, <laughs> bro, I'll put it to you like this. I was literally on the phone with somebody uh-huh. that I know yeah. that was doing the type of shit that I was talking about earlier. And f- we finally get on the phone. You know, because sometimes you got to hunt motherfuckers down. I finally get on the phone. It's like, uh, long story short, bro, your preference in old white dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, you didn't like, they're both old and white. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are we, we supposed to be a fucking, we supposed to be grown men, bro. We yeah. adults. And we, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not in eighth grade no more, dog. But, uh, but yeah, you know. 
I, it, it's honestly, we were talking, we we're trying to talk about with the substance within these two politicians' policies, right? Let's just say, for example, and like I said, not to harp on politics, and a lot of people right now have political fatigue. They've got presidential fatigue. They have election fatigue, and we get it. But the whole reason you, you came out, I'm, I'm assuming, and talked about this stuff was because it mattered to you, right? I almost wanted to say, you want to pause and take that stuff off and take a, a nah, ice cold bath? <laughs> nah, I just don't at all. Oh, yeah, yeah, all this shit. Yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. I'm listening. And and that's what this the series and potentially even further podcasting uh, content might contain because it is important to you and it should be important to everybody else that's a, you know part of the society that has mm-hmm. a family that has a small business whatever mm-hmm. and it's if you it's going to be times where you don't like what you say people don't like what you say and you might not like what you're saying yourself but it has to be said like it must mm-hmm. be acknowledged if that makes sense oh man i think what you're saying is definitely like we should definitely rewind like reference this little part sure. again in the future 20 minute mark got it perfect because noted <laughs> because uh um it gets to the the nitty-gritty of what could make this a value you 100%. know because if, if y'all don't like it let us know i cut it off i ain't, you know we ain't tripping uh, you know me and rob we i we already on contract you're gonna be taken care of but it don't gotta be 12 episodes yeah. you know but one thing i would like people to kind of take away from it is obviously I feel like I know Chingo and what he's about because I've heard him fucking ramble for hours Mm -hmm. or whatever. He maybe sometimes told some stories, which I'd love to. Um, And I really don't want to talk about politics all the fucking time. I'm not really that into the shit. You know, I'm not trying to convert you. I'm not trying to make you like the shit is over. You know, Biden pretty much won. And uh, maybe in the future they might find like, okay, we didn't have time to make our case. But maybe 10 years from now in the history books or some shit, they might be like, man, a dude confess, you know, eight years after 20, like in, you know, in 2029 or yeah. in, in the year 2030, we found the missing hard drive of the thing. And, the, you know, what's, you know, this person, this country, I don't know. And maybe all the cheating wasn't enough. Like maybe you could have Rudy Giuliani and them and the Kraken and them. And got, Sidney Powell. Sidney Powell got 255 cases. Bitch, I got the Kraken. She bluffed. Boy, that cracking. Apparently, the cracking wasn't cracking because Bruh. they didn't have enough time. That's my that's my. She's guess. got to the end of the week, right? But the funny thing about Sidney Powell is that, you know, they came out and said she's not on the team, right? She's not part of the Trump team administration. And some people are so conspiratorial and they go as far as to say, well, Trump's playing 3D chess, 4D chess, right? Because mm. if they get into it, you know, let's go. They go to the Supreme Court or whatever and they say Sidney Powell had, you know, set X and X on, on media outlets and whatever. It looks bad on their administration if they can't prove whatever she was talking about, right? Uh. But if she's filing her own suit as a as a crime and Trump's filing a whole other suit about election irregularities, mm. they're two different things. They can't really mm. say Sidney Powell said X if she's not a part of the team, has no retainer, you're not paying her or whatever. So she can still do her due diligence and, and file another lawsuit in another direction about crimes and whatever versus election irregularities and electoral, you know, uh-huh. canvassers and blah, blah, blah. So... For, you know, not to cut you off about it all, but it ain't over anyway. I know we all got fatigue and stuff, and, and Joe Biden it looks like he's on the path of victory, but this shit ain't over for at least another six weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my my guess is that, you know, it, it usually takes, I don't know, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> Let's just say a case of this magnitude. If you're working on a big multi-million dollar, some crazy big complex case that requires a lot of interviewing and, after just a bunch of fucking paralegals and researchers and all that, it might take a year to assemble a whole definitely thing. These motherfuckers had a couple weeks. Maybe they couldn't pull it off. Rudy Giuliani with motherfucking Beijing, that little shit. They That's put, the only thing they can like, focus the shit, on. The shit that I need in my canas right now because my <laughs> shit is getting gray as fuck. It's too much salt in the pepper. And uh, his shit was leaking. His shit was like genuine. Just <laughs> His shit was leaking. People tagging me like, Ha ha! Look, 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 look how people look when they lying. They sweating. That's how you sweat when you lying. I'm like, bitch, why are you tagging me, bitch? I'm not Rudy Giuliani. Right. First of all, bitch, you know. You're like, I'm in my garage and I'm sweating. I'm not lying, but and, I'm sweating. And they'd be like, you a sellout. Be like, bitch, your mama sold her pussy. <laughs> and it's like, Chingo, that's, you know. Like, I'm a comedian, motherfucker. I I'm say a what fan. I want. Yeah. yeah. I'm a fan. Bitch, I'm offended. How about that? Damn. But uh, I thought Giuliani was fucking covered in WWE makeup and he was just sweating, you know. Man. Even the people from uh, the Hill, the Rising, yeah, it's a uh, Crystal and the other little cat. I forget, what's his name? Sodger or something. Uh, anyway, 
they were saying how, because to me, they're pretty trustworthy only because they just, I don't know, man, some about them. Yeah. Like they're not mainstream. They're not getting those multi-million dollar contracts to be, you know, Chris Cuomo and Tucker Carlson and, and deliver lines and you got writers and shit. And it's a, a supposedly the chick is liberal and he's conservative. Right. They were on Rogan not uh, a while yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I first heard of them. Well, they were pretty much like, yeah, the cracking wasn't cracking. Yeah. And another argument people say about um, Trump's vote recount mm-hmm. uh, team or whatever <clears throat> is that they didn't lead with their best evidence. Mm-hmm. Like the first couple little cases they threw out there were like, uh, yeah, that's not even a lot of votes. Like, yeah, or, or whatever. But uh, I heard Scott Adams say that moving forward, at least in big cities, mm-hmm. he's like, cameras don't cost much. Like, you should be able to mount a little camera or some shit to where if you're handling a ballot, it should be some eyes on you to where you could read and see if it says Trump or Biden. Yeah. And it's, and all instead of all this complaining about, we were over there trying to look and we couldn't see. And Rudy Giuliani said, uh, you ever seen that movie, uh, My Cousin Vinny? <laughs> And you know, and he says, "How many fingers am I throwing up?" And the lady says, three. And it's because it's she couldn't see; it was too far, just like the voting people. And I was like, oh, "Rudy, man, first you got the Beijing running <laughs> <laughs> across your face, you sweating like a motherfucker." Uh, Dude, well, a good point though to that was that you had people that were counting the ballots sitting at a table right next to each other, like nut to butt. Yet you couldn't have a third party, you know, watcher or a Republican also stand by because of social distancing. That made absolutely no sense. It's like you and I were sitting right next to each other doing the ballots, mm-hmm. but you couldn't have somebody over your shoulder because of social distancing. What the fuck kind of sense does that make? Man, look. You ever play Loteria? Love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Motherfuckers be cheating. 100%. If you and, ain't cheating, you ain't trying. And if and if the main goal is power over the baddest bitch, a.k.a. America, mm-hmm. America the baddest bitch. That's right. And everybody want to fuck her. All these other countries are salivating at the mouth. Trying to figure out how they're gonna fuck over her pockets, you know, her economy. Yeah. Uh, stress her out, aka healthcare. Nah, but you know, motherfuckers be cheating. I'm sure the Republicans been cheating too. I think I think hopefully moving forward, they can address the cheating. And obviously, if you're quote unquote team one, you're not too focused on, yeah, we should get to the bottom of everything so that moving forward, um, you know, we can make sure everything's legit, yeah. you know, and kosher. At this point, it's kind of just, it's going to be, and it, it is, and it's going to be f- even more fun to just see how everything unravels, because there is a process that you can't ignore. Like, it's going to it's gonna happen, right? And then mm-hmm. it's going to be an outcome. There'll be an inauguration day and whatever, whatever. Whatever the decision is, either way, e- whether it's you touching on politics from here or there, or it's fucking uh, Stephen Crowder and Ben Shapiro going ham five days a week, mm-hmm. it ain't going to stop. The train's going to keep on rolling. Bro, you know what I heard? I heard CNN is going to turn on Biden. <laughs> this is some QAnon deep state shit, no, the, but I'd love to hear it. Well, the reasoning is, uh, number one, I think they're already saying that they're down to be bought out. Well, right? AT&T wants to sell them. Okay, so yeah, exactly. Um, and the theory... So Fox turned on Trump and CNN's going to turn on Biden? Well, no, 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 no. I'm not saying... No, basically, this is, the, this is what Scott Adams said. Scott Adams said... Give it to me. He basically said Biden is going to enter damn near 100 percent opposition like pretty much cnn's gonna turn on him fox news is gonna get on his ass um a, you know there's a whole bunch of republican senators and congress people and people in the house and all that crap that aren't gonna have his back and even a fraction of his own party isn't gonna have his back so it's damn near everybody including cnn and he basically said uh scott adams basically said that um People gonna be like, he's just regurgitating Scott Adams' right wing post <laughs> or some stupid shit. You parroting this motherfucker said I was parroting uh, Trump's shit or some shit. Okay. I'm like, bitch, you calling me a parrot? <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? El Cotorro, what are you calling? I'm me? not a fucking puppet. I'm not a fucking parrot. If you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, oh, that CNN. This is why they're gonna turn on him. When a dog is chasing a car, it's all fun. <laughs> motherfucker hey, get over here bitch yeah. ass Cadillac and he's chasing it when he catches it now what yeah. it's no longer fun just like uh, some of these you know Chicano um, comic writers that just like to shit on Trump what you gonna write what you gonna draw now are you gonna critique Biden maybe you might 
What else are you going to do? Or are you going to take four years off? Yeah. I don't know. But uh, really, y'all need to get ready for uh, President Harris. That's really who y'all need to get ready for. AKA, okay, go ahead and go get your uh, whatever jumpsuit you're going to be wearing. Because for any reason, she could put you in jail. And you know what, man? All this shit is nuanced. Because I know somebody yeah. is yelling at, at the fucking speaker right now saying like, um, but she also put away a lot of bad people. And most of them people were bad. So who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? Like she put away fucking pedophiles and rapists and bad people. Uh, so again, you know, the shit is nuanced. It, it's not all... Obviously, some people with Trump, you know, he's fucking Hitler, and all of a sudden, people that I know, people that I have my that have my cell phone number, in their head, it's like they never knew me, like they don't know me, or maybe their true colors come out. Yeah, and it's like, damn, bro, you could, damn, you could have texted me that shit, <laughs> and then I'd have to told you, and then my... I, yeah, and then I'd have told you, no, I'm not pro kids in cages, and. You know, no, those bars that you thought I had. Or who, we know, all these people, SMH and, you know, all these little comments. And I wish, or I hope, rather, that all of this makes people actually more active within whatever political stand they're trying to take. If you really give a fuck about everything that you comment on anybody's, not just Chingo, but anybody's social media pages, I hope you're going out there and you're trying to help the immigration reform. I hope you're going out there and you're trying to change the climate. I hope you're trying to do something other than talk shit behind a keyboard. Hey, speaking of, uh, what'd you say, climate? Oh, no, 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 uh, immigration, immigration reform. Okay, <clears throat> so y'all, y'all can fact check me. Somebody tweeted this, and I retweeted them, because I didn't have time to fact check them. Orale. But I trust this kid. <laughs> Never met him in my life. At no soy weech o. He said deportations by year. He must have had this in his notes. <laughs> Saved in his head. He, 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 he copy pasted this shit on your ass. It said deportations by year. 2011. I'm just going to round these numbers, right? Okay. So It's on your Twitter if anybody wants to see it. Yeah. So thank you. So 2011, 400,000 people. 2011. Out of who was that? Obama. Yeah. 2012, 400,000 people. Obama. Uh, 2013, 370,000. Uh, 2014, uh, damn, 600,000. 2015, uh, 2015 was like 235,000. 2016 was 240,000. 2017 was 143,000. That's during Trump. Trump. cutting it in half. Hella low. 2018, this one's kind of high, 256,000. But the biggest ones were 600,000, 400,000, 400,000, 400,000. Like, a shit ton. And, um... So cumulative, that's like a fraction of what Trump in the whatever two numbers that you had there. Yeah, it's it's basically the Democrats deported us all. Yeah. Basically. That's your next single. The Democrats <laughs> deported us all. Los Democratas. And um, another thing about it, this immigration stuff is um, what Marisol was talking about last episode where she was saying how the DACA thing I guess was flawed because it didn't really have a path to citizenship or right. something. Whereas how Trump was trying to do it, um, he was trying to do it a, a different way in exchange for some budget hmm. for border security, which I think is wise to have good border security. Now, some people are going to take that. Be- everybody misinterprets every, they like to pick apart every little thing. How did you go from they can't deport us all to please deport me and my rasa? It's like, I never said, please deport me and my raza. Let's see if your fucking Trump supporter friends help you now, bitch. I'm burning your bobblehead, puto. <laughs> um, fuck was I talking about? Oh, the DACA thing. In exchange for the... Yeah, so the DACA thing. Somebody tweeted it to me, and, and he was like, yo, I'm here's some more stuff about it. And, and shout out to episode three, Red Pill Tamales. Marisol went on about it, and here's some more. And I retweeted it, and then... Here come all everybody jumped in my fucking mentions like first of all Chingo like technically blah 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 basically like they're not trying to hear it they're not trying to hear nothing that remotely says the Democrats on some bullshit not signing stuff not passing stuff not negotiating when he was trying to meet you halfway um you sh- you basically pander to us every four years play despacito uh you hire some mariachis. And and then when homeboy tries to meet you halfway, you 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 don't sign off on the shit. 
and it's just not productive. Meanwhile, you're saying, I just don't want to keep these kids hostage. That's what Kamala said as right. to why she didn't sign for it. I just don't want... Well, these kids are in limbo still because you didn't want to keep them hostage. So you kept them hostage. Yeah. You try to use it to against Trump. Y'all see how ain't no DACA. Y'all seen that? Did everybody see how the DACA ain't go through? Ain't no DACA. That's Trump. That's Trump. Hey, Latinx. That might be a good segue. All the Latinx people, y'all see how Trump ain't give y'all no DACA. It's like, bitch, he tried. He tried to do the shit. And he said, give me some money for some border security. It might be some little drones. So you don't get no, you know, I don't know what. The, I know it's fentanyl coming through there. It's a whole bunch of dope coming through there. I mean, shit, I'm not trying to hate on the dope boys. Got to get your money, right? I mean, shit, just don't sell the shit by my house, I yeah. guess. But how many Americans are dying from this fentanyl overdose shit, from this uh, opium crisis? And where's the shit coming from? CHI. You know, and I was having this anyway. conversation with people uh, yesterday with some friends, some really, really good friends who are as liberal as they fucking come. And that's great, but I love them because they're fucking people and I love people, right? Despite yeah. what your fucking beliefs are, you dude, weirdos. Dude, if I got rid of all my Democrat friends, you wouldn't I, have any fucking friends. Or it'd be nothing. me and you in this fucking garage every day. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got a couple more Republican friends. <laughs> I'm just joking. But it's not like I've been networking in the Republican world for 20 years. <laughs> I've been kicking it with artists. Most artists are, are liberal. Since day one, you were fucking Demo or Republican. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and they, you know, they like talking about this kind of stuff too, in in a kind of nuancy way, where it's like all people are bad that are super capitalists. You know, the billionaires of the world, your Bezos, your Elon Musk, to the point where you know one of my good friends was like, he's just a trash human. You know, because he might have done one thing, one or two things, in order to get a land for a Tesla facility or to who, build his. Who are you talking about? Uh, Elon Musk. Okay to build his launch pads for the rockets okay. or whatever. You could definitely look in there and, and see that he may have gotten some land, you know, in a very uh, authoritative kind of way. But then I was just like, well, look, it's like saying that one bad you know, thing yeah. or one little uh, speckle of whatever is going to overshadow all of the other advances he's making, all of the other yeah. job creations that he's doing. It's like you can't just I mean, throw a blanket statement like that over and someone. That's, and that's what I feel like a lot of people are doing with me. Yeah. It's like it's that one little thing that got taken out of context, the, the part about... uh. Trump didn't call everybody rapists. And yeah. shit. He wasn't talking to me. And, bitch, man, I'm American on top of that. Yeah. And he didn't say all Mexicans are rapists. He said they're not sending their best, meaning the best ones ain't really the ones coming. Yeah, and he said, you know, South Americans, Middle East are coming from all over. Yeah, he said he basically was critiquing. He was talking shit about the people not doing their job. Yeah. That's, I think that was one of his main points, and I'm not a mind reader, but I speculate because he says... We don't know. We don't know what's... We don't know. Yeah. He's like, because we don't know. He's like, it might be terrorists coming through there. He's like, we really do not know. He said, because they're fucking incompetent. Some of whoever, maybe somebody's just a bureaucratic, lazy upper management person that's not really overseeing the Border Patrol. There might be a lot of Border Patrol dudes out there that are probably telling their superiors, like, hey, man... What did the governor say? Can we get some funding? Because these women getting raped, man. They got them rape trees and they hang in the underwear and shit on the fucking tree branches. And a lot of these women are telling us that uh, to pay the coyote, they, they basically raping them. And some of these kids, you know, they not even accompanied by parents. And what did the White House say? Basically, shit wasn't getting done somehow, some way. And Trump did say, uh, I'm assuming some are good. You know, so he didn't say all oh, motherfuckers. So shit, like I said, he wasn't talking to me. Yeah. He didn't say all of them. However, it is hard to justify the shit. No matter what, people are going to be super offended about it. And just because of that, they don't want to hear nothing else about the climate, uh, uh, you know, free speech and what's up with big tech and what's up with China and what's up with North Korea and Iran. What's up with these peace deals? What's up with uh, fracking and our oil industry? You know what I'm saying? Shit, we're in Texas. I mean, it's very relevant. Yeah, and there's a lot of things that, like uh, the coal, you know, mines and energy, especially since you brought that up, where other countries can literally build new factories and coal, fucking dig, you know, mine for coal on the daily, whereas everybody expects the United States to just take it down to zero, and that's going to fix global, you know, warming or the climate around the world. It doesn't make any sense. It's a bunch of bullshit. All this climate stuff, from the from the stuff that I've I've heard both sides. Yeah. It sounds really great on the left, like the um, the uh, PDF pamphlets that they sent me. Oh, right. They wanted me to go door-to-door -door for La Raza. Orale, vote for Biden. 
That would have been a great video, actually. <laughs> well, first of all, Matio Juventino, he fucking left me a voicemail. Like, hey, pendejo, like, yo ni voté, wey, yo ni puedo votar y me están mandando mensajes. <laughs> like, bitch, why'd you open your fucking big mouth? I ain't got nothing to do with this. Tio Juve got an album coming. He, he's mad at me. But anyway, you've never seen us both at the same place at the same time. But uh, the climate stuff, it sounds real nice. It's like, Oh, that like Paris climate accord. Hey, I want to. I like Paris. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, shit, we we voulez vous. We need to shit. We need to go over there and sign this paper and get on this climate accord. The Green New Deal. It sounds like it's a deal and it sounds new and green. Green is good. That means you saving the environment. It sounds great, but from from the other side of the argument is look at California. They can't keep the lights on. They got these rolling blackouts. Because they went all in trying to be green. They tied up all that money, which is your economy. Your economy is everything. If you ain't got no economy, you can't go to war. Basically, you're, it's just a matter of time until you get invaded. If you ain't got no economy, you can't even educate your young. Then it's a matter of time that your economy going to just it crumbles. Just, it's like a... It just gets worse and worse and worse. You can't educate your young. You can't defend yourself. Yeah. You ain't got no money. Uh, economy is everything. So what California did is, from my understanding, y'all can fact check me, because motherfucker, I'm the Tamale King. I know about pork spices, masa. I know about a taco trucks and shit like that. I may not be Anderson Cooper, but um, basically they tried to go so green that they went straight windmill, um, solar, um, you know, all these other hydro and you know, water and just everything. They tried to get away from nuclear, which supposedly is like hella clean. And nothing like Chernobyl, from what I've heard. Like, it's the future. They got that shit down to a science. It ain't going to blow up. It's not going to radiate and give people cancer and shit. Um, so they put all their eggs in this green new way. Sometimes the windmills, maybe they don't get wind. Sometimes it's cloudy. Y'all got fires and shit, and the solar ain't working. That's why they had to tell people, hey, dog, you think y'all could take turns cutting the lights off like 10 p.m.? And, you know, maybe if you're not home, turn everything off. Hey, Sorry, y'all, but we're going to cut your lights off. They were doing these rolling brownouts all while their homelessness was going up, defunding the police, crime going up. Uh, you know, it's Democrat run. You got Mayor Garcetti in L.A. You know, you got Governor Newsom. You, you, that motherfucker knew something. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why. He, <laughs> shit, motherfucker knew something. Dad jokes over I here. I mean, he I was, like uh, right? He, he's out there being a hypocrite. He's out there having dinner and shit but yeah he's telling you to lock down and i don't know if people from the left see it the way i look at it because i've stepped away and i've paid attention and i obviously view things some people think i'm QAnon. i don't know what that is i don't even know about deep dark web i don't know how to get on the dark web <laughs> okay i think you need a nap or some shit i have no idea no more apps on my phone i don't even have bitcoin i don't know shit about that i'm 41 so anyway i wonder so i asked on twitter all my friends and family in California, do y'all think that uh, Governor Newsom is doing a good job? And pretty much everybody, maybe it's all the people I haven't blocked yet. I mean, you know, all the people that uh, all the people that got blocked already, they're yeah. probably the ones that, oh, they're like, shut the fuck up already, bitch. Take your L. <laughs> Governor Newsom is amazing. You know, it's all Democrat over here, puto. But, uh, I mean, do y'all not see it? I mean, do y'all not see, like, depending on what city or, like, New York, Cuomo? Like, I texted a, a comedian homie from up north. Like, yo, what's up with the clubs up there, man? I, I'm taking a trip to Boston. You know, plug me in. They're like, man, it's it's nothing. He's like, up here it's different, bro. Y'all y'all can actually do certain shit. We can't do nothing. It's shut down. How are these businesses going to survive? It goes back to economy. You know, they're not. There's a lot of videos going around right now of people and a lot of the advocates for this are being very vocal about it. And obviously a lot of them on the on the right slash far right where they're just trying to tell everybody to disobey, just disobey all these mandates. They're not legal. Right. They can't legitimately fine you. You could take all these things to court, file lawsuits for it. They can't make you close your business. They can't. And the laundry list goes you know, down the line. And we all know this, but a lot of people are scared to do it. But if you gather together to do that as a whole, they can't do anything to you. They really, literally, under the Constitution, can't do shit about it. Otherwise, 
you're going to be under that umbrella of people that have killed themselves, have completely, you know, lost everything and lost their minds. And so the choice is up to you. We're still in America. You have that choice. And then some places you can't go to church. So I hope you're praying at home. You know what I mean? Because shit, if all this uncertainty, um, you know, you know, depending on what your job is, what your business is, what are responsibilities and shit, you know, the economy is very important. Um, I was talking to a buddy from L.A. He's talking about moving to Texas. And I was just telling him, I was like, man, you know, if, if you're from L.A., I probably recommend Houston because there's places where you can get that urban inner inner city feel like it's it's loud buses like it's um it's not what you think when mm. people think texas they think longhorns and you know you're out there rolling up some hay and you know you got a general lee parked out there by the you know got some land out here i got a buddy on a whole bunch of dirt um that's what they think so i was telling him like man you might like houston i mean austin is kind of very la-ish yeah um but you know, I just told him, like, dude, price of li- cost of living. Like, you can actually buy a house in L.A. <sighs> Man, if you ain't making some good bread, if I mean, if you got a lot of mouths to feed and you're not just able to, you know, you ain't selling no dope on the side. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're just legit. <clears throat> and you just got one hustle, one job. No, but anyway. That's tough as fuck. I know somebody, a couple of people, and I've heard stories of people that are like, you have good jobs, they graduated or whatever, let's just say just before this uh, pandemic, and they go and they look for a home and get a home, and we're talking like not even a thousand square feet, no garage, no yard, 1.1. What the fuck are you doing with $1.1 million just to get a thousand square foot place? You know, we're talking 1. like- 1.1 million? Yeah. Where, we're talk, where uh, exactly? The Bay Area, like San Francisco, um, somewhere, some even in just LA, California. Bro- this like Silicon Valley area, it blew up so like yuppie. It just amazes me still how left, like how Latinx everybody is. Like a lot of my homies up there, bro, these motherfuckers are borderline Antifa. <laughs> I swear to God, I promise you, we were working on a script. All of a sudden, ain't no more conference calls. You know what I'm saying? It's too much Breonna Taylor happening right now in the uh, world, big okay, dog. Okay. It's like the level of activism and everything that's out there in California for the left. Like, the, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's a spillover from like the Brown Berets during the Civil Rights Movement. Mm-hmm. I don't know what kind of stronghold the Democratic Party, maybe because it's a blue state. You have like the coastal elites and, but it's just, it's just crazy how, how yuppie silicon valley is like uh where one of my homies he works in the tech world he lives uh i forget the name of the town but it's like an old gold mining town it's like he doesn't live in san jose right he lives out like no i'm picking you up in san jose we still got to drive a good hour type of thing and it's them big redwood trees oh yeah yeah yeah. i saw that i remember yeah it's a big redwood trees and he's got some land back there and it's like he lives in the forest but there's neighbors and shit mm-hmm and I think they had some fires very close to there. And um, so that little town never used to have traffic. But you got people like Mahomie that are engineers and they work in Silicon Valley in the tech world. And um, they rather live there. They don't want to live in, let's say, Cupertino or San Jose or some shit or San Francisco. Yeah. San Francisco's all fucked up. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Woo. When's the last time you've been? Um, Was it I, last summer? Uh, it might have been, I can't remember, let's just put like a year. I went out there to start working on a writing project, we're collaborating, and uh, I landed in San Francisco, I killed time, I found a halal guys, went to eat, and it was in Frisco, and I had to do a couple U-turns as I'm walking, because it just got real sketchy, like down at the bottom of that hill, Yeah. like, I don't know what what the fuck that might be a courthouse i don't know but it's a whole bunch of fucking needles and shit and some homeless people right here and it's like some shit right there i need to book it that way and fucking go (laughs) a different way and you're walking over human shit there's the people shitting everywhere bro they pissing everywhere and they shitting everywhere like on the sidewalks yeah it's like going to downtown houston and it's like everything is an underpass it's not like oh we over there by two sweet the little bakery and it's some it's some tents and shit over there. No, 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 no. 
That's that's fucking crazy. I was actually looking up because California and for a good period of time, a lot of the states, the whole country was pretty red. You know, there's been waves of blue and red throughout history. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, actually now I just kind of want to look up when that transition happened, that it went so far left and blue that there's what we have now. You know, that kind of shit happening Mm -hmm. on the street. It's really bizarre. So speaking of red and blue, you know who Stacey Abrams is? Yeah. I I think she's mayor, mayor of Atlanta or something. I don't know what she is in Atlanta, governor, senator or something. And I guess she was running again, and she's credited with turning Georgia to a Democrat state. So suppose she helped turn it blue. Okay. Right. So I'm watching the Gucci Man versus Jeezy versus. I want to see these motherfuckers play some hits. I just saw a bunch of videos about this, but keep going. Yeah. So it's a battle type of thing, right? I'm sure they got paid well. It was a it was a, a big moment in hip hop. Even though lately I don't really relate too much with hip hop that much anymore. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm I'm trying to see Gucci Man versus Jeezy, and they're like, "All right, yeah, we up in here, Magic City," and the DJ's playing some music, and then they're like, "All right, fellas, thank y'all for being here for the verses." It's like you know, it's the DJ. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking I'm in the strip club. Right. I'm like, "Oh shit!" But first, I gotta we gotta call her, man. I want y'all to highlight real quick. Stacey Abrams pops up. And here we go. G C and Gucci Man. Hey, Miss Stacey. Hey, hey, Miss Abrams. Miss Abrams, how you doing? And I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what is this? What the fuck is happening? Did the, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, did the Democrats say, it, it don't matter what kind of black event is happening. If, I don't give a damn. If it's a Gucci Man versus Jeezy battle, we got to have our presence felt. Mm. I'm going to tell you how I was trying to process the shit. So she's like, hey, Gucci. Hey, Jeezy. Hey, hey, Miss Abrams. And she's like, now I want to thank y'all for helping me. Do, 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 do. And, you know, we got an important Senate race coming up. And blah, 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 blah. And, they're, and then Gucci man, real as fuck. He was like, hey, you going to clear my record? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, well, that would be the role of a governor. Right now, there's a very important Senate race. We need to get those stimulus checks to Georgia. And we need to make sure everybody's safe with the COVID, blah, 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 blah. And then they start dissing each other. And all right, you know, they start playing their songs and shit. By the way, Jeezy killed it. Yeah. Even though I was rooting for Gucci. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, there's all kind of beef I'm seeing on these little Instagram clips. I mean, they made money off of it. But I want to talk about how Jeezy's strategy was amazing. All right. But um, so I'm thinking to myself, okay, I don't know who owns Versus, who produces it. I don't know if it's an Apple Music thing. I don't know who really puts it out. But I'm thinking, okay, they have a production budget. They had to find the venue. They did it at Magic City. Someone had to coordinate both camps, make sure that, you know, any press passes, uh, COVID rule, regulatory stuff. Um, We've already talked. Everybody's negotiated. Everybody's been paid. What happens to the intellectual property in the future if they re-air it on Revolt or NBC or MTV or VH1? Um, So on. So there's a whole run of show. What does the viewer watch? What broadcasting equipment? What production company? What cameras? How much does everything cost? Do we need to bring in some extra lights in here? All that type of shit. At some point, somebody had to either raise their hand or somebody owed somebody a favor. But somehow, some way, in the run of show, all right, guys, now, before Gucci and Jeezy start playing, yeah, I'm the realest in it. You already know. Got trap of the year four times in a row. We need to have Stacey Abrams, a Democrat, call and zoom in. How did that come about? Like, was it Jeezy and Gucci saying, hey, man, I've been waiting to have this battle with you, and uh, we're going to make a ton of money, but we should probably have Stacey Abrams call in. I don't know who, how did Stacey Abrams camp call out and say, hey, we see you guys putting on this event. What would it take? You know, maybe we can chunk you some money. Was there money exchange? Was the producer and the owner such a Democrat fan that he said, the only way I'm going to make this versus thing happen is I need to have Stacey Abrams call in. How? Who? Why? I'm just confused. It's a fucking hip-hop battle. It's not like they were going to have Trump call in. Of course not. We're not going to have Hitler, Orange Man Bad, zoom in. All right, gentlemen. You know, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Gucci. Gucci, my man. Don't hurt him. Lemonade. Love it. I love lemonade. You know, in the backseat of the Hummer. I like that one, too. Jeezy, Trapper Die was my shit. No, they're not going to have no... Rep- 
Meanwhile, he's probably got more cred in that group of people than Stacey Abrams did. It's almost like in the mind of everybody involved, it's just an obvious. We're all Democrat. What? How? Like, who said it's, this is a black event? It's two black rappers. I yeah. mean, clearly, we're not going to have the Republican senator call in. Somebody, I, w- I wish I knew somebody to work with. Like, who? Why? I don't. <laughs> and then they just started dissing each other like it wasn't shit. And it's like. And everybody in the crowd was just like, who is House, Georgia House, Representative White? All right, can I fucking see this music go down? It's not like they had both. I mean, I don't even know if she was running. I don't know if this shit was over. I don't, I really don't, I don't, the timeline of when the battle was and all that. But it's like, I mean, maybe she's cool with them. I don't know. Maybe I think she's cool with their management. I have no fucking idea. I highly doubt it. I think uh, I think in Georgia was one of the states where there was a runoff where the, the, there had to be mm-hmm. in January like a whole other race, you know, to decide a member of the house or what have you. And people are trying to get anybody and everybody. So literally, there's videos of people saying, "Move to Georgia to vote." You know, it's like which is Andrew, highly illegal. Andrew Yang said that that he was. Did he move, really? He said he was going to move his family to Georgia to vote. And uh, like you said, it's highly illegal. <sighs> but I've heard that the Democratic Party are real good about loading people in buses and um, moving them and putting them where they need to put them. And somebody was telling me, they're like, you're not going to see that many homeless people around this time, around voting time. Because supposedly there's organizations that will get a little budget and just make them sandwich. I don't know what the deal is. Like, all right, man, we're going to get you a hotel room for three days and, like, you know, some crack. So, you know what I mean? A little bit of some of that hair. Hook you up with Hunter Biden. Don't worry. A little fence and all. You know what I'm saying from Hunter. Uh, suppo- that's, that might be some QAnon shit. But. That's fine. You're a fucking comedian, and this is a goddamn comedian's <laughs> podcast. Yeah. No, I'm saying I. Re- that's why I miss stand up so much. Yeah. Like, um, I have an album release party coming December 10th, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. Just for that feedback of like, Chingo, oh shit. The live performance Damn, aspect, dude, he's yeah. rapping. We ain't seen you rapping in a long time. You've been fucking with that comedy and the album's dope and the merch is on fire. and ah, You know, uh, but I am going to focus on a lot of behind the scenes stuff uh, cool. next year. Can't wait. Uh, there's only 37 days left in the year. Uh, we had a killer workout this morning. Um, and, you know, like I said in the beginning, man, like I'm burnt out on a lot of this stupid shit. Like, you know, do not look at the fucking mentions. Do not look at the comments. Uh, people just, fuck it. Some people are just going to think you're a Nazi. Yeah. And you're just going to have to live with that. And that's fine. And like I said, I still got 1.2 million on Facebook. So not everybody fucking left. Uh, and, and I've been around, like I told you last time, I've been around before, before fucking MySpace, before Facebook, before a lot of this social media shit. I know I'm aging. I'm, I'm telling everybody my age, but, um. You know, this shit don't make or break me. My only job is to provide. You don't got... Trust me, though. I did not want to rap forever. Yeah. I did this shit because I wanted to whip something up during quarantine. You know, I found a really dope studio, a dope engineer. And, um, you know, like I said in the beginning, man, like, you know, put the play together, whipped up some really hot music, put together a project, uh, you know, stirred up some controversy, a lot of press and, and talk publicity you really can't pay for yeah um it drops this friday it's fucking good man thank you man. like i i uh even before i ever met ever met chingo years ago i would have screenshots you know every new year's spotify or i think mm-hmm. even apple does like your year rewind kind of thing mm-hmm. chingo bling was always in the top three of like my most mm-hmm. listened to music every year like year after year and i would post it and i'll get memories now on facebook or snapchat of like this, you know, this time last year, this time, whatever years ago, it'd be screenshots of those music rewinds and it's mm. always in there. So to have new music and at the same time, having known you for almost two years now, awesome. it's fucking cool. People are really going to fucking enjoy this. I need to go on Spotify or some shit and clean up some of this stuff. Some shit I don't have control over, but I was kicking it at my buddy's house and he told his little Amazon uh, Echo, you know, play some Chingo Bling. And then he has it on clean version on his uh oh, okay his device yeah so that already limits what songs it's gonna play but yeah, it just started like three of them it basically was playing songs that I'm featured on oh. and we're all sitting there drinking them ranch waters and shit hanging out talking shit and um, and not even about not, no politics at all we talk, we nerding out about other shit and I'm like what the fuck song is this and the whole time you know I'm my own worst critic I'm just I'm in the conversation over here but my other ears like. 
Was that just some feature I did? <laughs> you weren't. You were barely in the song. I mean, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. I, I mean, some songs, bro, I didn't even recognize, but I think I was on there. Mm. One song had like thirty motherfuckers on it. I was towards the end, mm. and shit's just playing. And and I'm, anyway, I'm telling myself like I need to talk to my uh, music distributor people and see how how much of a pain in the ass it is to like even on TikTok these songs from the Versace Mariachi should be up uh Friday. We're God willing. Dope. There's no hiccup and like, oh man, you gotta wait till Monday. No shit like that. Cause I searched my name on TikTok and it's like ninety percent like features and shit. Mm. So I'm like, man, some of these motherfuckers didn't pay for in perpetuity and shit. Like you don't <laughs> like come on dog, you ain't pay me that much to where fucking ten years later you could still hog up my, my fucking pandora somebody you know like somebody like rob might be like fuck it we're throwing some chingo on and shit and it just starts fucking shuffling through a bunch of stuff i don't know about that you know what's funny is that we've we've done we're going just over an hour now and we didn't hit any of the, again bullet points not very many of them which is fine because this will just be the, the title of it'll be something where it's like we're talking about a lot of different topics not necessarily any specific political topics even though you covered a lot of stuff but i do want to segue into music again mm -hmm. because how long has it been since you released an album um, I think the last project mixtape was um Dirty or Chata. Yeah, I, with I DJ believe. Taco, right? Yeah, I believe that might have been fuck, dude. I don't know, maybe three years, maybe four. How was the scope of people? Because maybe you know musicians that are listening or people that want to put out their own music or don't have a real a good idea of like releasing something in twenty twenty. You know, even with or without a pandemic, versus three, four, five years ago. Is there anything as far mm. as how an artist would get paid? How that kind of stuff is calculated? Is it all pretty much the same still? Yeah, I mean, I really don't understand how those streaming services do their little fucking math, their equation as to your sliver of a penny per play. I don't think that's really changed much. I know for me personally, uh, this is all original beats, all original tracks. It's the, I mean, there might be a little sample or something in there. But uh, like with the project Dirty Ochata with Taco, that was like mixtapes, like me just talking shit, mm -hmm. trying to get on the new beats that were out put my spin on it, my little sauce on it. Um, but I'm always trying to reinvent. And, you know, we were listening to a, a bunch of random music uh, the other day at, our, at, at what, Mike's house, and they played some, like, Post Malone shit where it was, like, acoustic. Oh, yeah, it's good. Uh, what's the name of that song? Uh, I don't you know, know, but it's on the new album. I don't know. I don't know. It might have. I think he's done several. Mm -hmm. It might have been an old one off his first album. But, uh... What the fuck is my point? Um, oh, I was thinking to myself, hmm, I'm really not trying to do music forever, but uh, <laughs> I need to do one like that. I need to do a song like that. Only because it, I feel like it reflects a little bit more like maturity yeah. and reinventing. So you're probably not going to hear a lot of my ad libs. I'm, I'm about to reinvent my ad libs. You know, that's part of your branding and shit. That's part of your style. Um, but we're definitely Chingo 3.0. Uh, I definitely feel like I've evolved a lot, grown up a lot. And what I was saying earlier about what I would like for people to take away from this. What I would like is not only folks to get to know me and mm -hmm. just be like, all right, I know this dude rambles. And he talk, you know, I, he sometimes tells stories and I get to know a little bit. But also those adult table conversations. Like, all right, I get it. It's more hip to have Stacey Abrams zoom in to your fucking rap battle. I get it. You know, it's cooler to be Democrat. I totally get it. It's stuffy and white with the Republicans. I understand. Even though it's still very white over same, there. Same, same. It's Yeah, same. <laughs> yes or yes. Y'all got rich white people over there too. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's just how I voted this year. I don't really pick teams. I would like for folks to really dig deeper and see the nuance and really look at subjects from other options the other sides because some of the shit i said earlier about climate change how it's not fair in this paris climate accord that other countries get to continue polluting continue making that money feeding their economy they're having more jobs they're building windmills for america in other countries they making that money while they're polluting the globe meanwhile we're the assholes that don't get to fucking have those jobs and those contracts. We ain't building none of those windmills. We can't pollute. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like all the polluting that India and China are doing affects us. 
but you're trying to AOC trying to cripple our economy. How is that gonna affect minorities? You know what I'm saying? Let's just say you a uh, young black person making some good money. Y'all got health insurance. You know what I mean? You're not trying to defund. You know, you trying to get that golf membership. Like you're doing good. You they about to tax the shit out of you. And nobody in your family is gonna be eligible for any of these jobs because you if you go for the Green New Deal type of way. All that shit's going to get built somewhere else because y'all trying to be so green. Meanwhile, you're fucking over your own economy. Um, uh, I, I think came to mind because that's I ramble. I love it. I'm what like, came to mind? I'm like Kanye and shit. I don't know. Maybe I need to go get checked. <laughs> I don't know what kind of medicine they're going to put me on, Rob. <laughs> I fucking forgot about the sound you bank. Forgot. You totally forgot. You know, this is a real podcast, y'all. I know we ramble, but this is a for real deal podcast. That's right. We got a own Instagram page and everything. At what did he say? It's the oh, it's the Scott Adams has somebody from China tweeting him because now he's I guess he's on their radar, and Twitter, thankfully, uh, put a little thing on there that said you're dealing with somebody tied to the CCP, the Communist China, you know the China Communist Party, Communist, <laughs> Communist, you know the beer kicking in. Shout out to uh, Back Pew, <laughs> half one in. So somebody from the Chinese government somehow some way was tweeting this dude. And he's like, oh, let me set him up. He's like, I'm pretty sure he don't want to talk about how some people think this shit was released on purpose, this virus. So he sets him up by saying, you know, so what did you guys do to control it so well? Homeboy's like, well, you know, we, we complied to the rules. Everybody followed the rules. They, they didn't resist. They followed the directions. They, they locked in. They shut down. They didn't work. They wore the mask. They distanced, blah, yada, 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 contact tracing. And he's like, oh, okay. And then he was like, yeah, furthermore, he's like, people like South Korea did really well because they followed the rules, they complied, they stayed in line, they followed orders, wore the mask, the social distance, contact tracing. He's like, oh, that's, that's dope, you know, that's really good. And then he says, except Japan. He's like, Japan didn't do none of that, and they also did good. He's like, maybe there's a genetic component to how this thing was designed, and maybe it was weaponized and leaked on purpose. So y'all already knew. It's almost like you putting some shit out there where you already have the cure just to get a head start. Meanwhile, you done fucked over someone's elections, someone's economy, and you done fucked the baddest bitch. You caught her slipping. It's like, ah, America, what the fuck happened? And I've and, heard that talk about a lot where if they were to find, like, let's just say this, uh, these, um, what do you fucking call them, vaccines they have now mm -hmm. are effective here in the United States, they probably wouldn't be effective in other countries because it's a different strain. Mm -hmm. Why is that? It's like they, they put out that 2.0. As soon as you're trying to catch up to the last one, you finally got all your tests in order. You finally did it. You got it under control. You got herd immunity. Drop the next one. How are we supposed to even have herd immunity if everybody's locked up all goddamn time? Getting no sunlight, no vitamin D, getting depressed. Gyms are closed. Your immune system's low. Serotonin levels are down. Now that's a positive feedback loop. Now you further depress. Uh, so... Yeah, they not they. I know people that listen to the mainstream news and they give them a lot of credibility. They listen to somebody like me. Not only do I ramble and drink beer on air, <laughs> but they're like Chingo talking about vitamin D and fucking sunlight and your immune system and keeping your mind right and not getting depressed and uh, uh, working out and shit like that. They're probably like. Phew. I never hear Anderson Cooper say anything about that. They just talk about Trump's tweets all fucking day. And right now, they ain't got shit to talk about because Trump been quiet. So they're all like, ah, what the fuck? Ah. Let's talk about Giuliani's fucking fake hair paint. Let's talk about yeah. Cindy Powell. Let's talk about the cracking. And like I said, man, I'm burnt out on the shit. Um, I, you know, we decided to do this 12-part series so that hopefully people are entertained. Uh, they can hear some random stories. Maybe start to focus on the bigger subjects like like all that shit is cute where we just focusing on DACA and, and the border wall and what he said and and he said grab him out of pussy and and this that and he he fucked over some contractors back in the day in Atlantic City and you know this and all this stupid shit yeah. and then the other side is like well Biden actually did grab him out of pussy he ain't just say it <laughs> and Biden was over there smelling little kid's hair and it's just all fucking day back and forth and you know the shit is over I thought maybe we could have, you know, this shit could be entertaining and um, we can make a dope series about it. 
But give us your feedback. Send us your comments. I probably won't see them. If Mighty Soul sees them, I'm going to tell her to send them to Rob. You know, because I have to keep creating and I can't get fucking obsessed over like, oh my God, this person yeah. totally misinterpreted. I never said, you know, and it's like, Chingo, how did you go from this to, to that? It's like, bro, I, show me the part where I said that. Chingo, he denounced his rasa. Like, bro. But also, go to the podcast and listen. You know, everything you need on the What Did He Said podcast. Yeah. That, speaking of, and there's a lot of um, sub points or topics within like the bigger things that the politicians have talked to. Like, maybe some of the people that listen to that post don't find it as important. But when earlier we're talking about how the left, for example, likes to or is trying to feminize all men, mm -hmm. you know, and then we have phrases like toxic masculinity get thrown out there. There's things within business and entrepreneurship, capitalism and socialism, Marxism. All these different things that we will eventually also talk about because I think Chingo has a good take on it or at least a good opinion on it. And if, it, if anything, it'll be a lot of interesting shit talking about these points because a lot of them are really bizarre and ridiculous, in my opinion. That's just producer Rob talking. Mm -hmm. But earlier we were talking about, and Marisol brought it up, which I didn't even know what some of these were like. I know Latinx. I've been hearing Latinx for a minute, right? Which is, um, it's a person of Latin American origin or descent used as gender neutral or non-binary alternative to Latino or Latina, right? That's as far as I okay. knew. So it's an alternative. Yes. So if you want to call yourself that, that's cool, but we don't all got to be that. Right. Because the way that's I've... That's how you... But uh, the way I've seen it, like, um, I was damn near under contract to be a part of some Latinx comedy, some shit, the first Latinx, blah, 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 blah. The shit didn't pan out, but it's like... I wonder why. No, I'm just like... I'm just kidding. Uh, like, what? Wait, are we Latinx? Maybe I'm old. You know what I'm saying? Maybe my daughter gets it. Maybe my niece gets it. But are we all Latinx now? Like, why? I don't I don't understand. So so go on. So did you find the Latin A or whatever it no, is? No, I'm looking for that now, too, because those are completely different. Because she described it to both of us, and I didn't know what it was or mm. who's It might be some to, new shit. Yeah, right? So Latinx, uh, Latin A, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how to spell it, dog. I have no idea. Because when I, when I get it, I just get Latina, right? Instead of flattening. I think it's like maybe with an E uh, accent. Like Jeanne, Monet, Latine. It's, <laughs> no no it, mama's way. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, I put some shit on Twitter. I was like, remember when we used to be Hispanics? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we Latinx now. It's like, uh... I don't know, man. Maybe people in Austin understand it better. But the way I see it, this is how I see it. Because it came up. It came up over there. At, uh, oh, did it? At, at your boy's house. Yeah, yeah, I don't even know how I brought it up. But the way I see it is like, it's, it's a few different ways. I feel like there's a corporate branding side of it where you can market to all these Spanish-speaking people easier if you lump them together. Because Dominicans and Mexicans are are different. I'm just using. Sure. I'm just pick two random countries to make an example. It's like one is Caribbean. They have a different mix of people. Um, you know, Mexico is also diverse with a different mix of people. But like the beans are different. The, these folks are Caribbean. The only Caribbean part of Mexico is going to be like Yucatan type of area where it's it's kind of there in the Caribbean. That's why a lot of people from Cuba go that way. I believe instead of through Miami, but anyway. Right. But I, I feel like it's a it's a marketer's way to say, how can I easier? How can we make it an easier sell to market to a Puerto Rican, a Guatemalan, and like an Argentinian or some shit or Venezuelan? Right. And it's like, well, one South America, one's Caribbean, and one Central America. Like they're all pretty fucking different. They just, you know, they just all had some conquistador in them or something there was some rape and shit went down and if you do the latinx i feel like they can lump us in together and market to us better instead of being like well our venezuelan's gonna understand well venezuela's an outlier because right now what is it dictatorship and is it communist or is it socialist i don't know what the fuck venezuela got some issues right now yeah it does so i hear they don't even have a lot of stuff on the shelf they got some shit called hyperinflation where their money ain't worth nothing. And uh, it's all fucked up. And the dude that got up in there got up in there on some shady shit. And uh, I, I believe he's socialist or Marxist, something. 
Sepa la madre. I can't even find the the Latin A or the other ones, but you know, I, I get, do get a lot of stuff on Latinx where it's just and it's just like you know, regular not regular, but in America or Americans calling themselves nine binary. Like you hear Tom Segura make those funny videos or whatever about people that are just gender fluid and non binary. Mm-hmm. Like today they're a female, tomorrow they might be a male. I wonder how common and what percentage of folks like what's well, how big is that right sec- sector of the population? If in America it's little, it's small, you know, considering how big it is. I would just, my guess, everybody, that it's very tiny in Mexico as well. Non-binary. So today, Chingo Bling could be Chingo Blinga, you know, it could be just, you feel like a chick. Shanene. Shanene, exactly. Non-binary. Huh. I wonder what percentage of that, like I'm sure some people really, really are for real. Sure. Non-binary, gender fluid. But what percentage of people that claim it just mental health? Like, bro, you're just ment- bro, you're just Antifa. <laughs> That's the argument, right? Is how many of you are just putting these pronouns, gender pronouns in your bio and are just completely batshit crazy? Okay. That gender pronoun shit, when everybody was uh, attacking me and shit the first couple of days on social media, some of the Twitter people, I'd click on their thing and they'd have that. It'd be like his, he, they, L, whatever. And I'm like, okay, well, you don't strike me as somebody that I've met at one of my shows. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. don't know who all is a fan, who streams music, who's a casual fan, or who used to be a fan, or who might have just heard of me, whatever. But a lot of those folks, I'm just like, bro, like the, some of them are, have the he, L, L, or something. Oh, and, I'm, and I'm like, okay, I get it, bro. Like maybe if you're like if you're gay, I get it to put your pronouns and let motherfuckers know, like, hey, man, before you call me the wrong shit i just want to let you know look at my bio dog I'm, I'm he him type of thing but if these i'm assuming some of these motherfuckers were straight and they got the he l like what why you know what i'm saying am i tripping do, do i make sense i, I know totally yeah, like, yeah, yeah you're a dude yeah you're straight and in your bio it says he him like i isn't it redundant is what i'm saying right it's like you're beating a fucking dead horse it's like bro you, you're a fucking dude ain't nobody calling you a she it's not like you got a dress on. There's nothing she-ish. And I know some people are like, Chingo, you've never taken a sociology class. <laughs> These are gender roles, Chingo. Why can't a woman be an astronaut? It's like, that's not what I said. Not at all. Why can't a man be in the kitchen feeding? And, and why can't a man stay home and watch the kids and be the house, you know, dad? I, I didn't say nothing wrong with that. Shit, that sounds dope. More power to you. Can you maybe sneak in a podcast in the, in the garage from time to time? <laughs> but um, I don't know. Again, I just feel like some people are so hardcore. Yeah. Like, I don't want to just be like, they're all indoctrinated and they're, you know, they're all little fucking Antifa motherfuckers. And, and they also have hashtag BLM. And they also have, like, they just, social justice warriors. That sure. might That might be a thing you can maybe label some of them. And a really bizarre and dangerous uh, road that that leads to, and a lot of people obviously on the right would say this or argue this, is that people trying to completely discount how much or how important masculinity is, along with femininity, right, for a culture altogether. When you're talking about what kind of values you're instilling in your children, what kind of leadership you like, your role is in your household, like you mm-hmm. can't just take away the importance of a male in a relationship or in a marriage or in a family mm-hmm. because it, it has a really like impactful psychological effect on the males or a culture over, overall, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what kind of the left pushes on here in America for some reason. And a lot of people go along with it because they feel like it's a new normal. <laughs> like like I seen a dude. I hate that term. No, I'm, um, I'm, I'm putting a pin in another thing I want to talk about. Okay. But a dude on Twitter was like, I'm shook that it's the year 2020 and people in my DMs telling me that uh, me getting my nails painted is gay. And this is a dude that got a girlfriend and a, a baby. and they, they're, I don't know if they're married, but he's got a little family. But for whatever reason, maybe he's just fashionable. He's just open-minded. You know, he want to paint his nails. And he and he shook. The word shook. I, I left him a comment on the thing. I was like, I was like, bro, first of all, the word shook for starters. <laughs> I was like, that, that's probably the gayest part of your whole tweet. Not even the nails thing. Oh, God, that's funny. But I don't know. Maybe Bad Bunny 
Some people just want to be androgynous. Some people want to have that rock star or they wanted to like, like the same way I like to ruffle people's feathers by saying I voted for Trump. Some people just paint the nails and that's their way right. of being rebellious and a fucking punk rock. Uh, but anyway, here's the part I want to talk about. Yeah. So all this stuff about Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro talking about who was that? Oh, Harry, Harry Styles. Harry Styles. What group is he in? Uh, he's a solo now, but he was, I think he was One Direction, I want to oh, say. Yeah, he was like in a British boy band. So this cat, they had him on the cover of Vogue Vogue magazine. I was going to say GQ. I didn't know what the fuck. <laughs> they had him on Vogue rocking a dress. And, um, you know, it wasn't cross dress day at school. You know what I mean? It wasn't him and his homie. You know what I mean? It wasn't nobody just playing around doing shenane and shit. <laughs> It was like a cover story. Maybe he has an album coming out. I hope so. Otherwise, you put the dress on for nothing. But um, my daughter, who's 12, and obviously she's still... Developing. Yeah, she's a kid. She's trying to navigate that time of your life, plus who the fuck won the presidency, plus... A pandemic. Plus, why my dad sitting here reading the Bible, drinking out of an American flag coffee cup? <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to navigate all this shit. That's funny. I could see it. Good doing morning. That. Why he's doing burpees and shit? Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he's a red blooded alpha male. Yeah. Doing burpees in the backyard <gasps> with my kettlebells. And it ain't for TikTok, even though I might put it on TikTok. <laughs> um, follow me on TikTok. So anyway, she's and like, she's bas- she was basically like. Well, she sent me a, a TikTok little DM thing, and it was a boy in a dress. Uh, and I think he was a person that Candace Owens put on her story while she was getting roasted for the, her stance, okay. saying this is very dangerous to just always put the shit down people's throat. Right. So my daughter's like, well, I think he looks very happy, and I think he looks good in a dress. And I'm just like, okay, well, more power to him. I don't give a shit if that's how he feels. Fuck it. Go get you some designer dress. I don't give a fuck. Make sure your fucking closet is the dopest goddamn closet. You get all the fucking dresses you want. My thing as a parent is kind of what you were saying, which is like I asked my daughter. I said, okay, well, when you grow up and you decide to marry somebody, do you prefer maybe a masculine man? Or just, you know, one of these cats. And she's like, mm, well, masculine. I'm like, yeah. And my thing is what I told her. I was like, my thing is this. It's one thing for people to have the right to do whatever the hell they want. Dress how they want to dress. It's another thing for there to be maybe perhaps a shadow agenda. Where they want to kind of social engineer. Maybe it's another country that wants to weaken self-image because it's a persuasion tool to alter someone's self-image. Like if somebody comes to you with a petition, hey, Rob, we trying to put speed bumps, bro. Can you sign this? Well, the argument is if Rob signs it and now he feels like he's a community activist, he's altered his self-image. So now the next time they come with a petition or a thing, if he sees himself as a community activist, Rob, hey, man, come out here, bro. Uh, 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 bring a knife. Come on, man. Bring this... This dude over here tripping, man. Remember me? I'm the one that we did the speed, bump, speed bumps petition. And now you might be like, oh, that's my homie with the speed bump petition. And I'm a community activist now. And we about to stab this dude. Now I ask questions later. It's a dumb, bad example. <laughs> Very extreme example. I apologize. Maybe the beer kicked in. I don't know. <laughs> I like it. And the weed from running. But anyway, I feel like it's dangerous if it's just a, a shadow agenda. If... um. It might be just a mainstream thing. I, I'm not into this whole George Soros, blame him for everything. But who is gaining from constantly trying to rebrand and tear down and start over and rewrite? And that word isn't allowed anymore. And this one has a different meaning. And you can't do that anymore. And this is a new normal. And don't forget your mask and comply. And by the way, this is the new normal. Why you ain't got your gender pronouns and your Twitter? Like, that's how you know. If... If that slippery slope, or if if a trend, I'll take back slippery slope. But if 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 somehow, some way, in people's subconscious, if you've socially engineered that, all of a sudden, if it gets to the point to where it's like, Rob, I don't like how you came in here wearing pants and shit, 
and and being a dude and wearing an Astros hat and having a beard and shit and you know standing <laughs> standing up with shoulders back, I think that's toxic, my brother. Mm. Maybe you should soften that up a little bit and not not come in here with all all this yeah. shoulders back Astros hat motherfucker wearing jeans and shit, you know. That is exactly what's happening. That's now that's bullshit. So basically, where I, I'm, and I'm gonna hand it over to you. I just don't want people confusing, trying to get brainwash my kids. Well, and, I want to read you the tweet. Maybe this will actually further, uh, you know, solidify what you're talking about right now. And her tweet was, or Candace's tweet was, "There's no society that can survive without strong men." Fair to say, right? The East knows this. In the West, the steady feminization of men at the same time as Marxism is being taught to our children is not a coincidence. It's outright an attack. Bring back manly men. Who would argue that, right? Oh, but she of, yeah. got it. She got it that day. And Olivia Wilde went hard on her, too. Who is that? Some, exactly. Who is that, right? She's an actress. Oh. Um, a lot of people confuse her with Olivia Munn for some reason. But, um, yeah, she... And I was trying to find her, but it, it was a DM attack where she's like, you're a disgusting human being, you know, for saying... It's like, what the fuck so, are you talking about? I'm assuming that they interpreted what she said as homophobic... Right. ...or anti-gay or um, insensitive to the gender-fluid, non-binary... There you uh, go. ...LGBTQ+. Plus. Nailed it. So, basically, they took what she said... And found a way to um, maybe interpret it their way. Yeah. And get offended. Because as it is, factor this in. If it wasn't Candace Owens and someone else put that out there, I think it depends on who puts it out there as to the reaction. For example, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, in other words, she's already known as, like, a Trump, uh, right, conservative, Republican type of person. And she's black, so a lot of people think that's a sellout. Um, so I'm sure the level of heat she got, they already is probably from people that already already didn't like her. They already thought that she was somehow racist, <laughs> even though she's black. Yeah, um, yeah, like me. I'm some some people. Like, I knew you shaved his head, fucking Nazi. Um, so yeah, I don't know. You heard about that? Joe jo just walked in. Did you hear about that man? Uh, Harry Styles wearing a dress on the cover of Vogue. Yeah, uh, okay. So yeah, get lean. Talk to it right here, yeah. What do so you think about it? I saw that. I mean, I really don't have any opinion on it. It's just more of like as, uh, you know, I feel, I feel people are getting mad because it's a big magazine and it's always been like a certain way for so long. But for, to me personally, I really don't care. You know, things are changing. People are changing. You know what I mean? So More power I, to him. Yeah. Exactly, okay. yeah. Now remember, y'all, Joe, how do you, Joe? 24. Joe's 24 and he's <laughs> vegan. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm getting tired of you telling everybody. Uh, I, I like how you said it, Chingo. It's like you wanted to call me a soy boy. <laughs> uh, no, nah, but I, I feel you because that's the empathetic. It is. Right? That sounds like the nice, polite thing. Sure. Um. Uh, fuck, I'm trying to remember what I was going to say. Um, well, you were talking about, and it's a good point, like, in your daughter included, the younger mm -hmm. you are, and they always say, like, everyone's a Democrat until they turn 35, and mm -hmm. then they become more conservative as they get older. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, when you're younger, you do want to save the world. You want to help everybody, right? You want to be as sensitive as possible, but at what expense is what, you know... I, I, yeah, I think, I think the left, um, they really use people's empathy against them a lot of times yeah. because they carefully word things like anti they're anti-fascism. Fascism is bad. Yeah, they're just to me it looks like they're just tearing shit up, spray <laughs> painting and burning. Yeah. But to other people, it's like, well, they're fighting fascism, Chingo. Mm. It's their right to fight fascism. It's like, what what is fa what are you talking about? It, it tr trumps fascism. Mm. But I, I feel like they use people's empathy against them, like, wait, you're not wanting to be mean to gay people, right? And they're like, No. It's like, okay then. It's like, yeah, but Harry Styles is I don't I don't think he's gay. And it's like well, are you saying that a man doesn't have the right? It's like, well, did he want to put it on? Or did his publicist pitch it to him and y'all yeah. promised him to cover? Like, <laughs> why is he the one to volunteer for the shit? Like, is he transitioning? Is he doing a Bruce Jenner? And he's like, hey, guys, I just want to let y'all know this is who I really am. And I want y'all to get to know me. No, it just, they just chose him and there's an agenda and they want him to. Oh, this is what I wanted to say. Ready? Yeah. Right. So we're in the mall. We're walking past one of those makeup places like Morphe or some shit like that. And they had a big, like as you're walking past it, they put their big displays on those side walls. So it doesn't matter what direction you're walking, you see this like model with all this makeup and it's a photography. 
And I didn't even look at it. I'm just walking. My wife's like, oh, uh, that's a man. I was like, huh? And I look. And I was like, what? It, man, it didn't look like a dude at all. It was a ton of makeup, the lighting, and like little bitty face and shit. And um, it, it, I think it had his name and the Mac and the logos and the makeup. And this is some shit I always laugh at, which is this. In an effort, like women have bent over backwards to be so inclusive and progressive. A lot of women, not all, right? A lot of women have have said what Joe just said. You know what? More power to him. It's a beautiful product. I think he looks great. I'm a big fan, right? Of Jeffree Star and all these people. Right. Awesome. Okay, well, in an effort to be so fucking progressive, you done fucked over your fellow female over a job. That could have been a girl, influencer, vlogger, makeup, beauty, review person who got that fucking check. But y'all want to be so fu- that it's like the men running y'all all over again. Right. In an effort to be so fucking equal. I don't know what the fuck. In an effort to be so progressive and left, you done fucked yourself over. And my psychology uh, take on it, I told my soul, I was like, you know how women are competitive because they too are fighting subconsciously it's just in their dna evolution they're competing for resources they're competing for territory they're competing for the mate the, you know what i mean homie he could provide maybe you know I me mean? got a motherfucker driving a porsche and shit and he coming in the fucking crossfit gym ah, okay bitches is trying to see what's up with him yeah and um it's almost like they fell for the okie doke poster of the dude in in makeup because he's not competition to them that was my psychoanalysis of it. It's like women sometimes get so competitive with each other because subconsciously they don't know that they're sizing each other up and they're trying to, they come into situations knowing where they rank in the social hierarchy and they kind of know like, like if it's a ladies night out or a cocktail meet and mixer, they might be like, all right, I'm not worried about that bitch. Fuck that bitch. She ain't shit. She ain't got nothing going on. Okay, that bitch maybe. Okay, nah, everyone's on her dick. This bitch <laughs> over here, they on her nuts. Okay, this is really, all right, fuck it. She's going to, probably get her way and she's probably the only one getting paid to be here and all the dudes are looking at her and fuck it, I'm an eight and I might pull something too. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. That was my theory. You just blew somebody's mind by the way you described it because it was so it was so subtly important to, to see that that's a guy or it was a guy or whatever. Oh, the dude in the... Yeah, that just beat out the girls for that same role and mm-hmm. then we go back to the wage inequality, job gap, or job you know, discrepancies. Yeah, it's ironic. And I think it's not my comedy style, but I think someone can make a joke out of it where it's like a critique on women, where it's like, y'all let dudes run the makeup game. This is supposed to be y'all's shit. It should, no have been, it should have been all women CEOs, all women employed. Like, if y'all wanted to go all out and discriminate on dudes... This was the realm where y'all probably could have did that. And sure, there's going to be like a couple male makeup artists that, that are like there. Hey, try this on, ma'am. You know, we sell this, that, and the third. But down to the model, down to who's doing a collab with, with Mac, you know, it's like it's now it's more dudes. So let me. This, so this is what I'll, uh, I'll read you a line from uh, Olivia Wilde. After she went on that, you know, Twitter rampage and Instagram DM rampage. She had said, I hope this brand of confidence as male as a male that Harry has truly devoid of traces of toxic masculinity is indicative of his generation mm. and therefore the future of the world. And that's what the progressives really try to push. Ready? Listen to this, Joe and Rob. While we're having this discussion with my daughter, where I'm trying to talk to her and show her that I'm not homophobic, I'm not closed minded, I'm not your old old school conservative dad. Like I have a heart and I understand where you're coming from. She says, well, dad, you know, yeah, masculinity is cool and all, but there's a difference. There's also toxic masculinity. And I said, all right, Michaela, check this out. I said, you know what? Let's just say hypothetically. Hmm. So you like good grades? I She's do. Like, she, no, I'm talking to her. Yeah. No, I'm just going to ask yeah. for her. She's like, yeah. <laughs> you had a deep ass voice for a 12 year old girl. bro. <laughs> I do. I said, so you like getting good grades, right? She's like, yeah, I do. I was like, you like um, Air Force Ones and, you know, you're into hip hop dance. And she's like, yeah. I was like, I feel that that's like toxic femininity. You're a little bit too success oriented. The aggressiveness, you're too assertive. And there's a difference, Michaela. There's femininity. There's a young lady 
But then there's toxic femininity. Like you're trying to do well and you're wanting to like sky's the limit and you're trying to dream big or whatever. Yeah, I just gave her an example. And she's just sitting there looking at me like, motherfucker, where are you going with this? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you don't think toxic femininity is a thing? Hang on. Because you see all these little websites that really don't mean nothing. In a click of a button and with a very small staff, we've generated 175 different links that if you Google toxic femininity, oh, you got at least seven pages of articles that I could quote. I, these are my sources. I could tweet links to you, Michaela, about your toxic femininity. And she's just like, all right, dude, I'm going to my room. <laughs> because I was just showing her that these days, people believe the internet. They believe um, the news. All it takes is um, KHOU, Channel 11. They need a story for Friday. Fuck it. Somebody in the lifestyle section wants to do a thing on toxic femininity. Toxic femininity. Is it a thing? Has it gone too far? Uh, is it really harmful? Is it made up? Coming up at five after these commercials. Is this your daughter? Now, we sit here talking to someone. What do you think about toxic man, uh, femininity? In front of uh, fiestas, uh, out anywhere. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm shit. I mean, I never heard of it, but I mean, I, I heard of toxic masculinity, and I, I mean, I think it's funny. I, they, hey, I know some, some of them are bitches or something, right? Or, ma'am, come here. What do you think about toxic femininity? Well, I, I never heard of it. No, I haven't. Uh, really? Because um, Google it. <laughs> or we have some sources here. Now we're talking to a psycho behavior uh, therapist. Um, what examples? Is this? Are you familiar with the term? Yes, it's a new term, and it's out there, and some. Haven't entertained it much in the uh, psychi uh, psychology lane. and Now we're having a discussion about some shit I made up. Yeah. Now you done seen it on the news. You could Google it. Somebody might have tweeted a link. And if CNN wants to, they could put it in a headline. And if Twitter wants, they can make a trend. Now you're living in a world where that's all we're talking about. If Don Lemon decides, to, if Tucker Carlson wants to do, if everybody makes it the story for the week, it's a thing. Meanwhile... You got people dying of diabetes and all types of shit that we really ain't got to. It's normalized. We, we used to that. That's nothing new. We, we, we learned how to live with diabetes. We're not having that conversation. We're talking about toxic femininity. I like it. I don't know. Maybe I need to go to the doctor and see what kind of medicine they're going to put me on. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I was glad to take your, get your take on that. Um, I'm glad I did because that's probably going to be the best clip of the podcast. Oh, shit. you're talking about yeah, because I mean, you know, femininity. Poor Michaela, she's in the scene like, Dad, that's not what I meant. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if I got through to her, but, uh, but yeah, man, it is what it is. Uh, leave us a comment, give us feedback if you want us to continue it. Um, if it's not enough politics, if it's too much politics, if you want us to go back to just a regular podcast and we talk about, you know, hip hop and just random shit and what we have for breakfast, I don't know. Uh, let us know. Don't forget, Versace Mariachi drops this Friday. It might be my retirement album. You know, rappers don't retire. They renegotiate. Hey. But um, it's out and it's jamming. It's uh, 12, 13 tracks. You know, I wanted to make it a baker's dozen. I like it. You know, it's all about the tamale game. Sass. And uh, December 10th, album release party. If you heard this, if you listen all the way to the end, it's in San Antonio, Texas, December 10th. We're going to find out who listened to the end. Yeah, tell, yeah, tell Chingo about the show. Sasa.